The Congo region, encompassing modern-day Angola, Western Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Southern Republic of the Congo, boasts a rich tapestry of indigenous military systems. Notably, the kingdoms of Congo and Ndongo emerged as prominent players in this realm. Within this landscape, formidable war leaders like Nyazinga, also known as Njinga, distinguished themselves, with Njinga's leadership standing out as a testament to female prowess both on the field and in governance. The chronicles left behind by Portuguese mercenaries, priests, and travelers who traversed this region during the 16th and 17th centuries offer a vivid tableau of these native military structures. These accounts vividly portray instances where indigenous forces thwarted European designs and incursions. Such encounters effectively dispelled the misguided notion, propagated by some Portuguese of that era, that Africans would succumb as easily as the Inca or Aztecs in the face of horses, firearms, and artillery. The formidable warrior hosts of Angola adhered to a relatively open formation in battle. At times, they strategically deployed central, wing, and reserve forces, showcasing their tactical acumen against both native adversaries and the Portuguese interlopers. This adaptable approach underscored their ability to navigate diverse combat scenarios, solidifying their reputation as adept and resourceful military entities. Nyazinga, often referred to as Njinga, was a shining example of this martial prowess. Her legacy transcends gender, as she emerged as a redoubtable female ruler and field commander in this complex geopolitical landscape. Her strategic acumen and leadership on the battlefield established her as a formidable force, challenging prevailing gender norms of her time. Her story remains an inspiration, a testament to the indomitable spirit that coursed through the veins of the Congo region. Accounts penned by Portuguese mercenaries, priests, and intrepid travelers paint a vivid portrait of the native military systems that held sway in this region. These chronicles narrate tales of resounding victories against European plans and incursions, shattering the illusion that Africans could be easily subdued by the mere introduction of horses, firearms, and artillery. The Congo region's military proficiency was grounded in a keen understanding of their terrain and the mastery of strategic deployment. The narratives of Congo and Ndongo, etched in the annals of history, illuminate a pivotal chapter in the African continent's military heritage. Their martial traditions were not confined to brute strength but were finely honed strategies that reflected an acute understanding of their environment. The fortitude of leaders like Njinga stands as a beacon of inspiration, transcending gender boundaries and showcasing the innate leadership potential within every individual. These accounts also serve as a powerful counterpoint to prevailing colonial narratives that sought to diminish the capabilities of indigenous African military systems. They bear witness to a history of resilience, tactical brilliance, and strategic foresight that shaped the destiny of the Congo region. In recognizing these narratives, we gain a deeper appreciation for the multifaceted tapestry of African military history, one that defies simplistic categorizations and invites a more nuanced understanding of the continent's complex past.